Welcome back to the channel. We have some very exciting cards to go over today. Now, I'm not going to hype up every single card I see. That's just not how I do it. Uh, I want to give you the real and let you know if I feel a card is good or if it's bad. And if you think it's really good and I miss something, by all means, jump in and let me know below. So without any more BS, let's just get right into this. First up, we have Reign of Notions. It's a three drop. It's got the Surveil too. Then draw two cards. Reign of Notions deals two damage to you. Again, one more time, to uh, Surveil two, look at the top two cards of your library, then put any number of them into your graveyard, and the rest on the top of your library in any order, similar to a scry. So essentially, we're going to draw two cards, and we're surveilling as well. Not bad if we're trying to get to a card that we're looking for or to dump off a card in our graveyard. Whispering Spy. It is a deuce dropper. <laughs> I gotta stop for a second. I love the artwork on these cards. I really, really do. Uh, it's a Vampire Rogue. Whenever you surveil for the first time each turn, Whispering Spy deals one damage to each opponent, and you gain one life. Now, this card's not terrible, but notice it did say whenever you surveil for the first time each turn, if it was not on that card, I would almost believe this is completely broken, or at least you're going to deal a heck of a lot of damage very quickly to your opponent. Being that it's a 1-3, it can still be removed for having 3 defense. It's not a terrible card. I mean, uh, if I was going to go A through E, I mean, I'd give this card like a C. It'll see some play, but not a whole lot. Beast Whisperer. It is a 4-dropper. This card is going to see a lot of play, though. Elves needed some help, and I definitely believe they got the much-needed help they they desire. Uh, Beast Whisperer, it is a 4-drop. Whenever you cast a creature spell, draw a card. It's a deuce 3. Now, there are enchantments out there over the past you know, 15 years of magic where if a creature comes into play that has toughness or power you know, is greater than 4, you can draw a card. Uh, same with 3 or greater, you could draw a card. 5 or greater... This may not be an enchantment, but it is an elf, so it's contributing to your tribal uh, impact on the board. Uh, yes, it's not an enchantment, but whenever you cast a creature spell, draw a card, that's huge. Uh, as you guys know, elves don't cost a whole lot to cast, so this thing's going to have you drawing a crap ton of cards. I would give this card definitely a B. Really good card. Gateway Plaza. What do we have here? Gateway Plaza enters the battlefield tapped. When Gateway Plaza enters the battlefield, sacrifice it unless you pay one. Add one man of any color. We've seen these cards quite a few times. Um, yeah, I mean, it's, it's, it'll see very, very limited play in your limited formats and whatnot. Uh, it's just a common land, but if you need certain colors of mana, yeah, this is the card to go with. Goblin Crater Maker. Man. Is anyone else pumped about goblins and elves being back, like in full force? I mean, this is pretty cool. It's a two-drop uncommon goblin warrior. For one, sacrifice goblin crater maker. Choose one. Goblin crater maker deals two damage to target creature or destroy target colorless non-land permanent. Destroy target colorless non-land permanent. That's not bad, so this can definitely act as uh, some removal and well, it's going to act as removal for darn sure. You'll we will see some play for this card. Um, unfortunately, it doesn't say sacrifice a goblin. You have to sacrifice this exact goblin. So that takes it down to about a C for me. Otherwise, it would have definitely been a B plus or maybe even an A. Uh, but only for a two drop deuce deuce with those two abilities, it's not bad at all. Get rid of artifacts, take down a small creature. Sure, not bad. Nullhide Ferox, four drop beast. This is a mythic. It's got Hexproof. You can't cast non-creature spells. So you're definitely going to be going for Stompy. You're going to want to smash your opponent into smithereens as quickly as possible. Uh, for Deuce, Nullhide Ferox loses all abilities until end of turn. Any player may activate this ability. Really? <laughs> so I guess if you're up against... I mean, that's, that's kind of tough. Just having that said right there. Uh, I'm not sure yet. If a spell or ability an opponent controls causes you to discard Nullhide Ferox, put it onto the battlefield instead of putting it into your graveyard. Uh, I can see some definite triggers with this card. Um, for whenever you discard a card, this happens, but then you're just bringing it right back and putting it onto the graveyard. 
you can't cast. Okay, but then again, too, Nullhide Ferox loses all abilities. So that second, that well, that one, two, three, fourth portion down there, if a spell or ability an opponent controls causes you to discard Nullhide Ferox, put it on the battlefield. So then, if you if you ended up cast or paying the two, if your opponent ended up paying the two, then I don't think this would go back onto uh, the battlefield. Correct me if I'm wrong. I think I'm reading that correct. Artful takedown. It's a four drop. Choose one or both. Tap target creature. Or target creature gets minus two, minus four until end of turn. Yeah, I'm not too sold on this card either. Uh, I think it's fairly decent. I think that says one. I think that says four. It could be mistaken. could be one. Mm, Only limited play. You're not going to see this a whole lot. Golgari Guildgate. So the Guildgates are back. That's something to be hype about right there in itself. Having Guildgates back is really cool. Remember, there are some Guildgates out there. If you have one of each Guildgate, you win the game, I believe. I'm not sure that they're going to reprint a card like that, but it is pretty neat. And um, Or if you have, I think maybe it's if you control five or more gates, someone let me know which card that is. Appreciate it. Mainly, we're going over these for the artwork. Celestia Guildgate. Yes, another one. You tap it. You add a force or planes to your uh, to your mana pool, and it enters the battlefield tapped. Is it guild gay? Pretty cool artwork. I like the colorfulness on this. Would not mind uh, a foil version of this. That's for darn sure. Add an island or a mountain to your mana pool. Then we have the good old dimmer. Enters the battlefield tapped. Add an island or a swamp to your mana pool. Chemister's insight. It's a four drop. Draw two cards. All right, more draw for her blue. They, that's not like they need it anymore, I mean, am I right? Uh, Jumpstart. You may cast this card from your graveyard by discarding a card in addition to paying its other costs. Then exile this card. That's pretty sweet because it's just allowing you to draw more cards, essentially, uh, for not doing a whole lot. Just, you just got to exile it when you're done jumpstarting it. Not bad. Uh, for for blue, I'd give this uh, I'd give it a thumbs up. Maybe give it a C, C plus, C plus, maybe a B minus. District Guide. It's a three drop. Elf Scout. When District Guide enters the battlefield, you may search your library for a basic land card or gate card. Sweet. Gotta like that you can search for gates. Reveal it. Put it into your hand. Then shuffle your library. So yeah, it's basically acting as a tutor for your gates. So it seems like they're going to do something. Something's going to come in the next few spoilers where guild gates are going to be a thing. And uh, if you control so many, you're going to win the game or deal X damage or something crazy is going to happen. I'm looking forward to that spoiler. Guild Summit. It's a three drop enchantment. When Guild Summit enters the battlefield, you may tap any number of untapped gates you control draw a card for each gate tapped this way so there's one ability that is going to allow you to utilize having gates out whenever a gate enters the battlefield under your control draw a card and again that's pretty that's pretty good for card draw ability especially if you're going to go wide with a lot of gates in your deck uh, at least you'll be able to draw a lot of cards let's at least put it at that and you'll have all the colors you need to cast whatever spell down the road so not bad that, that looks fun ionize we have a rare we do. This is rare. It's a three drop. Instant. Counter target spell. Ionize deals two damage to that spell's controller. Oh, is it? Uh, you guys were looking. Uh, I think this is something a lot of you are looking for. And this card's pretty nasty. Not only can you t- counter something, because usually uh, it relies on having a lot of cards in your in your graveyard. It kind of is it does that two you know that's how it kind of works uh deals two damage to that player's uh that that spells controller that's phenomenal um having a counter spell and dealing damage and it says just counter target spell it's not countering a specific it's not countering a creature or an artifact or enchantment yes it is a three drop but this thing is nuts uh (laughs) that is a very 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 powerful uh, a very powerful counter spell indeed. Um, I would expect this to see a lot of play. Runaway Steam Kin. I'll give that card an A minus. Uh, Runaway Steam Kin. It's a two drop. Creature Elemental. Hello, Elementals. Where have you been? Elementals seem to have disappeared off the face of the earth for some time, but they are back, it looks. Whenever you cast a red spell, if Runaway Steam Kin has fewer than three plus one plus one counters on it, 
Put a plus one, plus one counter on Runaway Steamkin. Remove three plus one, plus one counters from Runaway Steamkin. Add three mana to your mana pool. Wow. Three red mana to your mana pool. This thing can get out of hand quickly. This is another... I think this is a really good card. Talk about ramp and then just blasting your opponent with... Uh, holy crap. All right. This card... Yeah, definitely. I give us a B plus. Really good. Uh, the only downside is the 1-1. One, one, so, yeah, it's, essentially, it's easy to remove. Uh, but other than that, it's, it's a great card. Defending... I'm sorry. Defending. Defending Clarion. It is a three drop. Choose one or both. Deafening Clarion deals three damage to each creature. Oof. Holy smokes. Creatures you control gain lifelink until end of turn. Wow. Um, this, again, is a very strong card. Uh, they are going crazy with this, removing all that. I, I understand why, and you guys understand why in a second, because they are adding cards that are going to splash down a ton of tokens, and they're going to need something to counteract all that interaction. Uh, but this card's definitely going to be one of those that will take it out. I'm excited to run red and white in a deck. I don't know about you guys, but I'm definitely pumped after seeing a lot of these spoilers. Izani, Thousand Eyed. Izani, Thousand Eyed. Holy smokes. All right, what do we got here? It is pff, a six dropper. Legendary creature, Elf Shaman. Undergrowth. When Izani, Thousand Eyed enters a battlefield, create a 1 1 black and green insect creature token. For each creature card in your graveyard. Oh my gosh. For do sacrifice another creature, you gain one life and draw a card. So there's even a perk on top of that. Commanders are going to have fun with this guy. Um, yeah, this this looks like a really fun card to build around. The casting cost is a bit steep, but I mean, I guess that, ha that makes sense for the ability. Uh, but the undergrowth ability, that's that's kind of out of control there. Uh, definitely, uh, this is a B plus for me. I'm not sure commanders commander uh, players might disagree and give it a good old A, but... Wow, I did not expect something like that to come out. Really good card. March of the Multitudes. This thing is stupid. So you're going to want to have in your sideboard, if you're playing standard, uh, you're going to want to have some mass removal. And this card is the reason why. One of the reasons why. For X, a forest, and two planes. It's an instant, and it's an instant mythic on top of that. It's got Convoke. Which means, again, your creatures can help cast a spell. Each creature you tap while casting this spell pays for one colorless or one mana of that creature's color. Create X. 1-1 one, one white soldier creature tokens with lifelink. That last bit right there, lifelink, has me sold on this card and their soldiers. The only thing that would be worse is if they were humans. If that said humans on this card... This would be entirely, I wouldn't say broken, but near broken in, in some formats uh, where this, yeah, this would be stupid. In modern, I could see this going ridiculous. It would, it would, you take people to pound town. I'm stuttering on my words because I'm overwhelmed by the multitudes. This card's going to just, just, it's going to devastate. Really cool card. I can't wait to play it in standard. It's going to be a heck of a lot of fun. A plus. <laughs> I like it. A plus, maybe an A. Night Vile Fairy. We've got some fairy rogue. Ooh, flying. It's a two drop. Whenever Night Vale Fairy attacks, surveil one. It's a one deuce. All right, so not bad. It can help out a bit. Um, how excited are I, How many fairy players we got out there? Uh, fairy rogues, especially. Hey, this is going to combo great with that other card. I uh, can't think of the name of the card right now. Gosh darn it. Um, but Bitter Blossom will be fun to have this in there. Um, and not only Bitter Blossom. Ah, what's the card I'm thinking of? Not just Bitter Blossom. It's, there's this other card. Forgive me, forgive me for I have sinned. I can't remember call the name of the card. But this looks like a really fun card, especially for those who play fairy decks. Secrets of the Mausoleum. Also, guys, I dropped a deck tech uh, before this one. Go in infinite, and you can do it as soon as turn four in standard. It's ridiculous. Make sure you check that video out. Uh, but this is Secrets of Mausoleum. It's a deuce drop. Undergrowth. Search your library for a black card with converted mana cost equal to or less than the number of creature cards in your graveyard reveal it and put it into your hand then shuffle your library holy smoke so using surveil okay yeah this is going to be crazy this instance going to be fun it's, it's acting as a tutor 
Um, and essentially, it, it's almost as good as a demonic tutor. Whoa, 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 whoa. Let's not get crazy, okay? It may not be as good as a, a, a demonic tutor, but it is up there, man. Because uh, you can only search for a black card with converted mana cost equal to or less than the number of creature cards in your graveyard. So equal to or less than. You would really have to, uh, yeah, you'd have to go nuts on yourself, uh, on your deck, and throw it in the graveyard for this thing to really go off. But being able to tutor something up <clears throat> and throw it into, <laughs> excuse me, and throw it into your hand, this is really cool. Uh, yeah, it's not as good as Demonic Tutor, of course. Come on, come on. Uh, but this is really a, a powerful spell in black. It looks like black and green is really going to be a force to be reckoned with. Uh, in this, in the new standard coming up, uh, yeah, there's going to be a lot of decks that just lose a lot of power, but black and green is, and, and white and, uh, and red are going to be nasty. Uh, let me know your guys' thoughts on these cards. Which was your favorite card, uh, spoiled today? I know I'm really pumped. Uh, Secrets of Mausoleum, I can't wait to use. And there's also quite a few other cards in here, March of the Multitudes, that I'm really pumped about. By all means, please, uh, leave your thoughts below. And uh, as always, guys, punch that like button, PLA.